I'm Dr. Craig Chappell at Intuit Medical, and I want to discuss today a little bit about carpal tunnel syndrome. I want to discuss what it is and how it's treated. Carpal tunnel syndrome is basically compression of the median nerve at the wrist. A lot of people have, have questions about this because of the, pres the presenting symptoms with car carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome can present as pain in the hand, numbness in the hand, tingling in the hand, or it can travel up the arm, the forearm, into the shoulder, sometimes even into the neck. And so it's, it's kind of hard to weed out uh, some of the symptoms sometimes, but basically uh, a lot of uh, patients complain of uh, numbness at night. So they wake up at night, their hands are numb, and they have to shake them out, or they have to reposition them or move them around or whatever else, and it, and it resolves with time. They go back to sleep, and then it happens again. And so nighttime symptoms are very common with carpal tunnel syndrome. Other symptoms or other uh, causative factors may be driving. So you're in a fixed grip on the steering wheel, You'll notice that your hand goes numb. A lot of people have to put it to their sides. They feel like they have to get circulation back. It's not a circulation problem. It's, a, it's compression of the nerve that makes it feel, feel that way. In Utah, a lot of people spend a lot of time on bikes. So mountain biking, road biking. So they're always in a grip type position and they'll get numbness in their hand. The numbness in the hand generally affects or historically affects the thumb, index finger, the middle finger, and half of the ring finger. That's the distribution of the median nerve, the nerve that's actually compressed at the carpal tunnel, which is right here. It can, however, cross over and affect the little finger as well. So not every time is it 100% one way or 100% the other way. So if these fingers are going numb and the little finger's going numb, still pretty consistent with uh, carpal tunnel. As far as conservative treatment options, conservative treatment options would be night splint. So that's a, pretty much the first place to start. So if you're sleeping at night, um, everybody curls up to sleep. We all sleep in a flexed position. We all flex our elbows, flex our shoulders, and we flex our uh, wrists, and it kind of kinks off that, just like a hose, kinks off that median nerve. It puts pressure on it. When the median nerve gets kinked long enough, it begins to swell, it like, acts like a dam. So you dam it off here and it swells up your arm, and then you get in, into more chronic problems. But the first place to start is night splints. You can get online and order them. Uh, we, we do have some favorite, favorites. Um, I personally did have carpal tunnel sy syndrome and I don't like the, uh, the wrist splints with Velcro on them because I scratch my, <laughs> my face a lot at night. Uh, so you, you can, there's a whole plethora of uh, possible carpal tunnel splints you could choose from. So get online, look at them. They're not very expensive, but that's a good place to start. And as far as giving a, a fair shot, you've got to try them for three three weeks to three months before you say, hey, this worked or didn't work. Because sometimes it takes a long time for that nerve swelling to, to, to go down and diminish. And the reality is if you wear them long enough, there's a chance that you can resolve it. But it really depends how big your nerve is to start. If your nerve, well, I'll, I'll give you some areas. So a median nerve measured right here has an area. So a, a circular area, just like you remember uh, math, um, but it has an area. Anything greater than 10 millimeters squared is abnormal. But when the nerve starts to get like double normal, so 14, 15, 16 millimeters squared, even with night splints, it usually doesn't shrink back all the way to normal. So then we have to do uh, other things with it. But the first conservative step is night splints. The second thing you could try or should be trying at the same time uh, would be home exercises, which you can find on our website, or physical therapy to basically try to increase the space or stretch the ligament that's compressing the, the, the median nerve in the hand. So those two things are also very effective for mild carpal tunnel sim symptoms. If you try that, give that a, a good effort, it's still not working. So as I, like I said, three weeks to three months and it's just not getting better, we move on to other conservative options. Those options would include uh, cortisone injections. So we inject a steroid, so people sometimes get confused with Cortisone and steroid, they're the same thing. We, use, we throw that term around uh, inter interchangeably, but we do a cortisone injection. Uh, studies do show the best way to do a cortisone injection is with guidance, so we can basically appropriately get it around our target. We actually don't wanna put it in the median nerve, which can happen with a blind injection, but we wanna put it around the median nerve to allow some decrease in the size of the median nerve. It will sh uh, shrink up or, or decrease the inflammation with a steroid. If that works and you get three to six months of relief out of it and you continue the night splints and your symptoms come back about the three to six month mark, we can repeat that process. That's a really good outcome with the cortisone injection. If the injection lasts for three weeks, it's a really good indication that the next step is going to be a carpal tunnel release. So we've worked through our conservative options, uh, night splints, physical therapy, home exercise, and cortisone injections. And if we're still not getting it where it needs to be, then we're gonna move on to a carpal tunnel release. 
There's multiple ways to perform a, a carpal tunnel release. Um, the, historically, the, the most uh, performed procedure is called the mini open. The mini open basically makes a two centimeter incision across the base of the palm and they dissect down onto the uh, the, the, the ligament that we're trying to cut, the transverse carpal ligament, and they cut the ligament. Works very well, and they stitch up the palm. The great thing is it works very well. The downside is you're in wrist splints for several weeks following the procedure, so return to work uh, takes longer than a lot of people like. And that's what's prohibitive for most people getting the procedure. There's many, many pe people recommended to get the carpal tunnel release, but choose not to for basically a few different reasons. One would be they can't afford to take time off work to heal. The second one is they're afraid of surgery. The third one is they can't afford it. So those, those are the reasons people are not getting the carpal tunnel release. Um, and the, the splinting with the open procedure um, can be uh, prolonged. So it can, can take a long period of time. To, and, and like I said, I, I can't afford to take that much time off work. And uh, so it, may, it may, makes it a little bit difficult. And then there's an the endoscopic release where the incision goes through the wrist. Um, and that one's done with a, a, a camera, putting a camera up underneath the transverse carpal ligament and cutting it on the way out. That has a little less downtime. So you're looking at a, a couple weeks with that as far as downtime is concerned. And there's a couple stitches involved. And then there's the release that we perform. Uh, we make a, a tiny incision, about four millimeters on the wrist. It doesn't require a stitch. After we're finished, we can put steri strips on it, just tape it up, and three days later, those strips can come off and you're usually good to go. Um, but as far as downtime associated with the release, it's about four days. So in most cases, we do this procedure on a Thursday. People are back to work on a Monday. If your job is typing, um, you could go back to work the following day. If your job is manual labor, uh, then I, I would suggest going back on Monday. And, and it's all variable, but we play by, by ear, but our downtime is generally about four days. But this is the device that we use to do it. You can see that it's very, very small. We'll fit through a tiny incision. We run it up under the transverse carpal ligament. And the cool thing about today's technology is we can visualize all the important structures from the outside in because of ultrasound. So we're, we're seeing the global picture without ever opening the skin. And that's what I love about this procedure. We don't open the skin to take a look. We actually look with sound um, without opening the skin at all. And once we verify that everything's in the right place, we will insert this device. There's a little knife that pops up, cuts the transverse carpal ligament, and you're good to go. Hopefully this answers a lot of your questions about carpal tunnel syndrome and the current uh, way to treat carpal tunnel syndrome. Thank you.